<laughs> that bad. <laughs> Dying <laughs> from the state of England. <laughs> anyway, that's yeah. That I'm definitely um yeah. I'm definitely I'm definitely with you there. That's no good. Children's party, no good. Mm-mm. All right, Mid American Conference. I feel like really it's Toledo and Ohio and everybody else, sort of. Um, I guess maybe Miami could play with Ohio, but I don't know. I think we should start with Toledo, right? Like, yes, it's, uh, but, but, it's a pretty freaking good team. That, like, Daquan Bannon but, is the best quarterback in the conference. Wait, oh, before? Yeah. Before we do that, real quick. So, last year, this is la- it, it come around this time last year. Okay. Um, Central Michigan, these, these were also in the conference around this time last year. Central Michigan, 4-1. to one. Toledo, 4-1. Mm. to one. Miami, 5-1. to one. Northern Illinois, 6-1. to one. Western Michigan, eight and a half to one. Kent, nine. Eastern, 13. Ohio, 14. Buffalo, 20. Ball State, 22. Bowling Green, 40. Akron, 120. So um, I say this because we, I, I kind of brought this up before the uh, Big 12 preview show, and I would, actually would have loved to, to run this down next year uh, for, for each of the conferences, excuse me. Um, Unexpected things can happen. NIU went from winless in 2020 to winning the conference in, in 2021. Um, so even though I think both of us are going to think that this conference is very chalky, kind of top, more top-heavy than it has been in a while, um, we need to try to, I don't know, uh, we need to come to terms with that there's an extreme amount of unpredictability in college football, but especially in this conference. So that's all I wanted to say before we actually start. Okay, that's fair. Although we do agree to Quanson is the best quarterback in the conference. He's electric. Right? And he I, takes care of the Cur- football. I would say Curtis Rourke is a better quarterback when healthy. But but both of these guys are the uh, – the, the premier of the conference. It's it's these two, it's Daquan Finn, Curtis Rourke, and then everyone else. Right. And, and, and I mean, and let's be fair, like, he's a real dual threat quarterback. Like, he runs good and he passes good and he makes good decisions. Um, he's the best thing that ever happened to Jason Candle, if we're, if we're being perfectly honest. I feel like their schedule is a little bit rough, though, because they don't get any buys. I mean, well, they get a sort of mini buy when Maction starts the week of Halloween, but mm-hmm. all the way through the end of October, no buy. So we'll see how that goes for them. I I feel like the defense the defense is returning a lot of tackles too. Like the defense is going to be good. Like I don't know. It's I guess you're right. We wouldn't take Toledo plus one seventy to win the conference. Right, like that's just not a good thing. No, but but I cheerfully would take them over eight and a half wins. Yeah, I mean, in terms of yards per game, which is not the best metric, um, but that's what I have easily available. This is so in terms of yards per game allowed, Toledo was number eighteen in the country last year, uh, flanked by. Penn State, 17, and Troy, number 19. Um, so a, a, a very, very, very good defense, um, especially in in this conference. And they have to, Daquan Finn, as you said, coming back. Um, it's really hard to see um, how this team, I don't know, uh, slips up. If you look at their schedule last year, like, when Daquan Finn was healthy, he beat teams up in the MAC, winning 38-17 to versus Central, 52-32 to versus Northern Illinois, 52-31 to versus a good that, – at that time, a good Kent State team. Um, and then sort of got injured. They lost the Buffalo game. Um, you know, he was not 100% himself, but still beat Ball State. Um, and Ohio and Curtis Rourke was hurt um, in the conference championship game. But 
Like when when fully healthy, this this team has the ability to make mincemeat out of the remainder of the conference. I think. Definitely. Like if, yeah, if it weren't for the schedule, I actually would like the plus one seventy. They have an awkward patch there. They're going to play a bunch of road games in a row when they're tired. It's going to be a challenging setting. Um, but but yeah, but we don't really should be favored basically in every game on their schedule except I mean at Illinois of course. Yeah. Um I wonder if they would be versus San Jose State. Um most like likely. Yeah. Most likely, but that would probably be inside three if I had to take a guess. Um That's you know what I really like? You know what I really, really like? I, I, this is not available currently. Um I think a first half or first quarter bet on Toledo versus Illinois might be very juicy. Illinois is losing a you know they're they're obviously extremely physical defense, but they're losing a lot of key players. We have uh you know um a new defensive coordinator, um new QB in place. Like I wouldn't be surprised if if Illinois looks a little choppy out of the jump, whereas this team, this Toledo team with a high amount of continuity um, and with Finn's ability to to scramble and and get, you know, a short third down uh, by running the ball, that might be a really interesting first half look. Um, They're currently a ten and a half point dog. Um, I will be playing around with that um, once that line is available. Something something to think about. Definitely. Like they will uh, get, could, they'll get gas. Yeah. Illinois Illinois will gas them towards the end of the game. But out out the gate? Mm. I mean, Illinois is gonna have physicality. There's no question about that. They're gonna have a physical edge. Um I would yeah, I can see yeah, I can totally see them though getting three points in the first quarter. And yeah, you can take that plus three to the bank. I can see that. Um, I I feel like yeah, it's hard to poke holes in this team. Like in terms of the conference, like every level of the defense is like you know in the top three in the conference all around. Like the players are rated well. It's yeah, Finn got to stay healthy, but otherwise this team really yep. should plan plan on hoisting the trophy. I think really, yeah, it, it's up to Ohio. It's up to the Bobcats to take it away from them. Bobcats, who, of course, have never won the conference. It's up to them in Tim Alvin's third year here. I don't know. Could happen. They got that one wideout who's freaking jacked. Um, uh, the, like, the white guy or the black guy? Um, Jacoby, the, the black dude. Okay. Um, yeah, he is. He is. He is basically like three percent body fat. Yeah, you know. <laughs> he's he's he does, like you uh, if you had muscle. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Although I'm actually I'm actually low key starting to get a little bit of a dad bod these days. But um, good for you. But yeah. I mean, you know, it's it, it's 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 better to not look positively symbolical. Um, with my shirt off, but. But yeah, the Bobcats are gonna be good. Rourke is a good quarterback. Um they said he was better than his brother, which I thought was an interesting statement to me. I, by they I mean like, you know, Ohio Bobcats bloggers or whatever. Mm-hmm, the commentariat. Um, yeah, the commentariat of the Mid American conference. <laughs> uh but, <laughs> like <laughs> like you like Toledo, yeah, they they bring back a lot of starters. They bring back most of their tackles on defense. Um, they'll probably have a somewhat better defense this year than last year. Like, yeah, I don't know. Other than this team, though. Oh, and by the way, just to be clear, Ohio plus two seventy to win the conference. I don't know. Their schedule looks good too. Ohio has two buys, but but yeah. Otherwise, I don't know. Tricky, 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 tricky. What do you think of the Bobcats? You like this team? This all comes down to um, 
is is Rourke fully healed um, from his ACL injury uh, that he uh, sustained in the latter part of the latter part of the season last year? Um, is is he healthy? Is he ready to play? And or is he healthy enough to uh, withstand actually a kind of decently challenging non-con? Um, so we said that Toledo had. Um, uh, Illinois, and then San Jose State. They also play UMass, um, and then another team that, that's slipping, but I think it's an FCS team. Um, Ohio has to go on the road to San Diego State. Now, we said that, or at least I said that, I, I believe that they're going to regress on, on defense, but still difficult, difficult game. That could be something like a Bahamas Bowl sort of matchup. Um they play Long Island University, whatever, but then also on the road at Florida Atlantic and then have to play Iowa State. That's really tough. Um, that could bang them up uh, before conference play. Um, if if I was Coach Albin, I would play Cordis Rourke versus Long Island University and then just sit him for the rest of the non-con. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um that's that's the real question, uh, in term uh, the real question like is can can Curtis Rourke be healthy and will the team and his health be able to um, withstand a you know not it's not a Georgia Iowa Oklahoma non-con but it's a, it's pretty challenging. They are yes they are going to have to see their offensive line grow up before our very eyes. Um, they, but I mean, they are all, they're all juniors, so this is a good year for them to grow up. I, yeah, I'm with you. I, I definitely could see them getting beat up. They're definitely going to welcome that September 30 buy. That's definitely a good time, end of September, to have a buy to this team after yeah. getting whooped up on, going down to the swamp, and then coming back home to Iowa State. Yeah, good time. I was, I was sort of thinking, maybe, maybe this this organization was cursed. Like maybe this program was cursed, but like they got a kind of an etch a sketch opportunity here. They can write a whole new story. <laughs> like, I don't know. I like this team. I guess I guess I can't bet on them. But I could, I think they can make it back to Detroit. I think they can make it back to Ford Field for another championship game. Agreed, agreed. And I think if if we if Rourke was um, was healthy last year, they would have won this conference. They definitely have to feel that way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They fucking nine win season last year. They got to feel that way. Yeah, um, they're. Their problem is their defense stinks, but they they yeah. have a light out offense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's a better. Yeah. Yeah. Toledo's a more balanced team. Yeah. Ohio relies more on gaining yards. Yeah. Well. Well. All right. I guess maybe I'm coming around to Ohio plus two seventy now because like we won't get a better price in any of the important games on the schedule. Then plus two seventy. So like maybe we should put it in pocket. But if if Rourke, I mean, so Finn, I don't know what Daquan Finn's injury was. I think it was maybe an ankle. Um, I think that's what he had the last two years. And ACL tear is a whole nother story. Um, I think we want to be careful about this horse. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see if Rourke's trick knee starts acting up. Yeah. All right. We'll keep an eye on that. That's fair enough. All right. Well, those are our two conference favorites. So who could knock them off? Well, maybe Miami, Ohio could knock off the Bobcats. Maybe. Um, say what you will about the Red Hawks. At least they got, you know, pretty much their whole defense coming back. 
They got a quarterback behind Brett Gabbert who didn't play that bad last year. Avion Smith wasn't terrible. So they got some depth at quarterback. Miami O is seven fifty to win the conference, looking at a win total of six and a half, juiced way to the over. I can see I can see this team well first of all, yeah. I can see this team having Chuck Martin's like best year ever. Pretty easily. Chuck, I don't think Chuck Martin's won more than uh, six games here ever. No, he won seven games the other year. Oh, God. Yeah, he could win eight games this year. Pretty good team, the, the Red Hawks have. I disagree. I think this is a team that is going to um, – I don't know about regress because they had a, a bad season – but they had a bad season because uh, Gabbert was hurt. I, I I don't think that they're going to be in, in contention for, for the conference. And um, three reasons. Reason number one, I have been fortunate or, or unfortunate enough to watch a decent amount of these Miami of Ohio games. And they don't really have much of an, um, an aerial pass attack, um, except – for the deep ball, uh, which Gabbert can throw pretty well. Um, and for the last few years, they had two guys. Um, I can't remember what the white guy's name is. It's like Sorensen or something. Um, so they had Sorensen on one side of the field and then Mac Hippenhammer on the other side of the field. And they basically ran my offense in Madden which is like run the ball on first down, play action, attempt a deep ball pass on second down, incomplete, (laughs) deep ball pass again. Like, so that being said, that that guy, so Sorensen left last year and Mac Hippenhammer is gone. They no longer have that deep threat on offense. Um, so I'm not really sure who they're going to be passing the ball to or, like, who's a real uh, game changer on the offensive side of the ball. So that's number one. Number two, um, in 2021, Central Michigan wrapped up the year by beating Washington State in the Sun Bowl. Um, They were a good team. What happened to them? They lost two offensive linemen to the NFL and the chips shit the bed last year. Now this isn't the NFL, but they lose um, a guard to Oklahoma and a guard to, uh, to Iowa. Mm. Um, and I think without having the, that sort of deep threat security blanket or that wide receiver that he has an excellent connection with, I'm concerned about Gabbert uh, losing that type of offensive line talent. In addition, they also lose um, some key defensive players. Um, A safety goes to Minnesota, and and a corner goes to Ole Miss. So this team has been the best defense in the MAC since we started this pod. Um, and you're right, they do turn, return a lot of folks, but um, having that quality of talent leave your team is um, a major concern. So the, all that being said, if the defense has a few additional holes and the offensive line has some significant holes, Gabbert's coming back from injury and his main wideout is gone. I don't think this team, um, I think this team is, is, um, has, has a, just a really challenging season. Like to me, the latter part of their season, Toledo, Ohio, Buffalo, Ball State is, it's all, they're all in jeopardy of being losses. Um, and it's very possible that they will lose versus Bowling Green at home. So, um, yeah, that's that's where I stand on this team. 
it's, it, it's an unforgiving start to the season. I'll give you that. Coach Martin goes on the road four of the first five weeks, including trips to the U in week one, and then a trip to Cincy in, uh, in week three before his conference opener at Kent at the end of September. Yeah, Oxford. Yeah, it's been, they're not going to watch. They're not going to see a lot of football in Oxford, Ohio, until October, and that that could be, yeah, that could be hairy. Yeah, you know this. All right, this is a tricky conference, my friend. This is a tricky conference. I don't know. I don't know. Where do you want to go to next? Should we look at the champion? Should we look at Buffalo? Should we look at the the champion? What do you mean? Not the champions. My bad. Not the champions. Sorry. Sorry. Northern Illinois. Not the champions. Oh. Maybe um, Buffalo. I don't know. The the commentary that likes Buffalo as a dark horse. So mm-hmm. maybe we should talk about Buffalo. I think we're already in dark horse territory. Whereas Miami, right, the contender, and then we're in dark horse um, also ran territory real fast. Right. Yeah. That's how it feels. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, yeah, so looking at the Buffalo Bulls, who are active as ever in the transfer portal, they do bring back their quarterback, Cole Snyder, the junior. Uh, this team was supposed to go down the shitter when Leopold left, and they didn't. They they went bowling last year, and, and they won their bowl. So Coach Linguist is on to something. I don't know. I still feel like this guy is like a year or two away from really building a thing. They only return 10 starters. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't take Buffalo plus 650 to win the conference. I think that line is whack. I think this is a fraudulent team. And I said that at, in last year as well. Um, yeah. They, um, I this my my internet is not loading very quickly, um, but okay. So let's look at the the latter part of the schedule. So okay, they they beat East. So in in conference play, they beat Eastern Michigan. Then they mm-hmm. uh, fifty to thirty one. That's an impressive win. Um, then they played Miami of Ohio won only 24 to 20. That's when the backup was playing. Um, Avon Smith was playing. They beat Bowling Green. Who is okay? Fairly. I reiterate. Is okay. He was okay. But he was he was a backup and was not expected to play. Um, they trounced Bowling Green 38 to 7. But if you look at the box score... It's slightly closer than that score indicates. Bowling Green turned the ball over four times in that game. Um, mm. And Buffalo only um, outgained them by about 80 yards. Um, sorry, my internet is, again, very slow. They beat Toledo, but um, Daquan Finn was not 100% healthy at that time. Um, they lose to Ohio. Lose to Central Michigan, lose to Kent State. They they beat Akron by the skin of their teeth, twenty three to twenty two. Again, this is Akron, um, and then they beat Georgia Southern in the Camellia Bowl, but Georgia Southern outgained them uh, in in that game, uh, and the result of that game was twenty three to twenty one. I'm just not sure. I think they were kind of probably. They got a little lucky last year. Like you would think after uh, the coach flees and a whole bunch of kids transfer that this would have been a, I don't know, uh, a four-win team. Uh, they, they probably pulled out a couple more wins out of their ass than they were supposed to. Um, so I'm not really sure – that this team has the ability to win the conference exactly. Um, but I think you're right. They're, they're probably building towards something. Um, yeah, I, that's, that's where I stand. I just kind of think that they're, 
that they were for, that their their record was not indicative of the caliber of the team that they were last year. They yeah they well better lucky than good always. They had yeah. a weird season last year. Um, I seem to recall them playing games because of weather on bizarre days. Yeah, like, did they not that was have, the like, Akron Tuesday game. Tuesday morning game or some shit. Yeah, that was the that Akron was... game because of snow in Baltimore, maybe? I mean, in, in Buffalo, too, me? Some, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. something. I don't, yeah, I don't remember the details. I'm just like, yeah, it was a weird season for them. It was, it was a tad bizarre. They did have that losing streak in November. Um, like, I mean, and they really got whooped up on by Ohio. Yeah, it's hard to see this team making a dark horse charge and being plus six fifty, that ain't even a dark horse price. I don't know. No. I would sooner yeah, I would sooner look at either <laughs> Eastern Mich or maybe Central Michigan. Fucking thirty to one. where do we want to go next? Actually, yeah. Let's okay, yeah, well let's yeah, let's think about Central Michigan for a second. Because they got a running quarterback. Whose, whose dad was in the NFL. They got this uh, Bird Emanuel. You ever seen this kid run? Yep. He's like a he's like a truck. He's like a truck. He's like a grown man out there. Like I feel like thirty to one strikes you as a hell of a price on central on the chip. So I think the chip could probably play pretty good. And McAway is an experienced coach. Like I mean, they return nine guys on defense, not thirds on defense. I yeah, I don't understand how this is a thirty to one team. I, yeah, I like them as a dark horse a lot. Um, I also can imagine that Eastern Michigan has a good season. But we'll, I guess we'll come to the Eagles next. We'll stay on the chip. Would you Would you take Central Mish 30 to 1? Uh, oh, yeah. I, I've already taken it. I've already made that bet. Um, oh, really? Oh, wonderful. Yes. Let me pull up my um... – I'm pretty sure I have. Let me pull up my my spreadsheet. But uh, so this kid, Emmanuel. Uh, what the fuck is that? Uh, let me look later. Um, how many passes do you think he completed uh, last year? He started four games, or he played. No, no he don't games. do the passing part of it. Actually, that's true. If we get into third and long, they do have to bring in a backup. On on a, like a pure passing down. How, um, do you know how many do you, how many passes but, he completed in four games? Um, four. Take a guess. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that that sounds about right. He's not a passing guy, but he's a big one. Not a passing. Thing. Okay, so I bet. Uh, Central, what's the current Central Michigan price that you got that you're seeing? Yeah, thirty to one on FanDuel. Oh boy, really? Um, I grabbed this earlier and it is, I grabbed it at twenty two to one. So that's unfortunate. I'm surprised the market moved against us. I know, I know. <laughs> no, that's not, not a good sign. That's not a good sign. It usually ain't. It usually no. ain't a good sign. Yeah. You know, it usually but, yeah. but what the fuck? Like they I feel like signs is pointing up for Central Mish. Um oh and also they had like a lot of net giveaways last year. They were a minus eighteen in turnovers last year. Like that's pretty that's a, that that usually bounces back. Um particularly the fumbles of it all usually bounces back. Let's look at Los Chippewas in El Transfer Portal. If this can load. Again, I'm really sorry. It's taking forever. Yeah, uh, I mean. Um, okay, yeah. so nothing super significant. Uh, they get a wide receiver from Wisconsin. Okay, who knows about that? Uh, they lose a, a, a linebacker to Georgia State. Fine. A punter to OU, fine. They lose Daniel Richards, Richardson, the QB, to, to FAU, fine. And they get a punter from some FCS school whose logo I don't 
uh, recognize. And some tight end with no stars, presumably he never played, uh, goes to Marshall. So, um, yeah, not a lot of influx of new talent, but um, I think that's a good sign after a disappointing season that you don't have, you know, like half the roster fleeing to the transfer portal, you know. McElwain's a pro. Like, he's – like, this. he's been at big programs, right? McElwain was at Florida. Florida, and before that, he was at Colorado. Like, he's been a big program. Yeah. Or yeah. rather, Colorado is, State, right? Color, anyway, yeah. This he this is this is definitely a bounce back team, and honestly, I'm very det- I'm tempted to bet the money line at New- Michigan State week one. Be <laughs> tempted. <laughs> Actually, that is I did mean to bring that up. They also have a road heavy start to their season at Michigan yeah. State, home to New Hampshire, then at the Fighting Irish, then a trip down to the. South Alabama. That is that is awkward. Rough. That is awkward. That then they have the conference opener hosting Eastern Mish. Then they go on the road at Buffalo for their fourth roadie in the first six weeks. And that and that is a program that gets around by bus, mind you. Uh, except of course for the Alabama trip where they will bus to the airport, take a flight somewhere ridiculous. I don't even know. Does anyone fly direct to Birmingham? How the fuck do you get to Birmingham? You probably have to fly to Dallas first, then you go to Birmingham. Like it's you, not or direct. you connect, yeah, you or, or you connect through Atlanta, yeah. Atlanta, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, connect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got to fly to Atlanta first, and then get on a hopper. Because who's flying to Birmingham? So that's yeah, it's a long, it's a long, it's a, yeah, this is a lot of travel. It's a lot of travel before we get to the meat of the conference schedule. That said, they got a coach who's been through it. I don't know anything about the quarterback situation. They got a new quarterback to break it in. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see about that. Who is the uh, who is the guy who's going to throw the ball? This kid Bauer, is that right? Maybe. So they got to get someone to throw the ball occasionally. Got to break that guy in, <laughs> but. No, stop. No, but only occasionally. Doesn't have to be that many times. Well, um, Bert, Bert, Bert Emanuel is the Q, is presumably the starting QB. Right, but he can't. But what if it came up pass. and it was third and sixteen? <laughs> you can't be the court, you can't be quarterback on third and Hunt. sixteen. We're, we're not punting. <laughs> we got to bring in a guy. We got to bring in a guy. But otherwise, the, yeah, the chips could stay on tie. The chips stay on schedule and offense. They could have a heck of a season. Um, mm-hmm. Their defense, their defense, you know, returning nine guys, they got to get better. Come on. They got to get better. Where, where do you want to go next? All right, then. Yeah. Well, then, no, we got to respect the Benny market. We got to talk about Houston and Nish and then, and then Northern Illinois. Um, okay. So, yeah. Fun fact about Chris Creighton, fun fact, 29 and 13 as a road dog in his 10 years here at, uh, or I guess nine years, this is his 10th year, at, at um, Ypsilanti. Pretty impressive, if you ask me. Returning summer stars on defense, only four on offense, breaking in a sophomore quarterback, it looks like. We'll see how that goes. He doesn't seem to be, you know, very well regarded this Austin Smith. Manageable schedule to begin with, except for that trip to Minnesota. That's that's a skull fucking, you know. Howard, mm-hmm. UMass, Jacksonville State, conference opener, Central Michigan, manageable. I could see this team yeah. I I could see this team having a pretty good season. I don't know. I can't see him. I can't see them winning the conference. By the way, their win total is seven and a half. Too high. I, well, too high. I think that just speaks to how manageable the schedule is, but um, but maybe too high. I I would probably want the under for the over. Uh, has Chris Creighton won more than eight games straight? I mean, except for last year. 
No. I don't think so. Last year was the first time he won eight or more games. So, no. He's probably not going to do it again with this guy, Austin Smith. Incredible that this team is 9-1 to one to win the conference. That's insane to me. Uh, I, I I don't think it's insane. Um, so they beat Arizona State last year at Arizona State. If you if you had to replay this, uh, a, a, a random Eastern Michigan season versus a random Arizona State season a hundred times, how many more times does that happen where Eastern Michigan wins outright on the road? That never fucking happened. In the yeah, desert. exactly. That never happened. Exactly. 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 I- exactly. Okay. So l- let's let's look at the results of this of this team last year. Um, their wins. Some of their wins here. Uh, Twenty to thirteen versus UMass. They were like a twelve point favorite. I laid it with Eastern Michigan versus UMass. Oh, that did not work out. frustrating. <laughs> that did not work out. Um, they beat Ball State twenty to sixteen, Akron thirty four to twenty eight, Kent State thirty one to twenty four. They won a lot of one score games. Uh, the the only one score losses versus Toledo when they lost a game, they they got beat up quite significantly. 49 to 21 at Louisiana, 50 to 31 versus Buffalo, 39 to 10 versus Northern Illinois. Uh, okay, and in addition, they had two players. Um, they have a had a guard and a linebacker that got drafted last year. Um, that is the first time that two Eastern Michigan players have been drafted since, guess what year? Since ever? I was going to say since ever. No, no, it's, it's, no. It, it, it has happened. Okay, then it's going to be like 1992 or some shit. 1977. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Not since the Carter administration. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Yes. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um so I think they were uh, they were a hair fraudulent. I think they're in jeopardy of missing um a bowl game. Let's look on um in the transfer portal. I don't think there's been that much activity if I can if I can recall correctly. Um yeah, it looks like they've actually had a little bit of a infusion of talent for the most part. Um if if we can describe it that way, but um, they do okay. They do lose a a tackle to Mizzou and a wide receiver to BYU. Um, they, they've gotten some like power five power five talent in here, but you know presumably those guys are kind of scrubs, right? Um, yeah. Anyway. I think this is going to be this is a less talented team than last year. They were pretty freaking lucky. Um and this non-con, again if my internet can load. Yeah, I, I mean they should probably beat Howard UMass. And we don't we I mean we went through the um we went through Conference USA. We don't really know much about Jacksonville State, but on the road should still be a, perhaps a bit of a challenge. Um yeah, I just think you're right. The the seven and a half win total I think is more of a function of how weak the the non con is as opposed to how good this team really could be. I yeah, I'm with you. Um I'm definitely going to be on Akron at home to Eastern Michigan for Maction Tuesday. I bet mm-hmm. that would be a good spot. Um, like, I bet that's going to be a good spot. Let's okay. talk about them. Let's talk about them, actually. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Are we Look, Moorhead's building something. He's definitely building something. 
and they were like better than their two wins last year. Akron wasn't hot garbage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Y- yeah, the, they lost a a shitload of close games. Um, twenty-one to twelve versus Liberty, thirty-one to twenty-eight versus Bowling Green, twenty-eight to twenty-one versus Central Michigan, thirty-three to twenty-seven versus Kent State. 34 to 20 versus Eastern Michigan, and again we mentioned that 23 to 22 versus 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 Buffalo. Bull is like, yeah, Joe Moorhead might be the the best coach in the MAC, the best Easily offensive mind be. in the MAC, right? And yeah, this is this is a team that I think makes a bowl, and honestly, if if Rourke is hurt, then the East really is wide open. Because we've talked about, we don't think Buffalo is anything special. I think Miami of Ohio is going to re- regress. Um, we haven't spoken about Kent State and Bowling Green, but really not any, um, uh, you know, uh, not flagship programs, to say the least. Like, if there's some flukiness and this, you know, um, Olive shaped ball bounces a few in, in a few extra funny ways. I think Akron could see itself representing the East in the conference championship game. This is a good dark horse to bet on. You will find Akron the same price as Central Michigan, thirty to one on fan. Really? You betcha. Oh boy. Put that in your uh, pocket. Um, I bet them at 50 to one. So there we go. The market is moving okay. in, in the right direction for me there. Wonderful. All right. Very, very well played that. That's one fine wager. Um, yeah, no, we'll see. We'll see what he can do with his big, with his big six, six quarterback iron. Uh, Moorhead, Moorhead's clearly a dude. He's clearly a dude. Like, they got waxed in the non-con last year, and they're probably going to get whooped up on by Kentucky and Indiana this year. At least definitely Kentucky, I should think. But uh, but otherwise, yeah, yeah double yeah. by, manageable conference, so that makes the conference schedule more manageable. Like, yeah, I can see this team. I can see this team definitely going over their three-and-a-half win total. A hundred percent. Um. And I also bet, um, and this is probably stupid, but I bet the Temple Akron over fifty four uh, week, week week one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, fingers crossed on that one. Okay, over fifty four. I don't know. We'll see how that goes for you. Yeah. Uh, I I think I think well Temple's gonna have to do something. Um, so we'll see if Temple wants to help. Yeah, yeah, I like Akron. Let's put Akron in our pocket. See what mm-hmm. happens. See what happens with that. But yeah, the rest of this conference, you know, I wouldn't fuck with these teams. Talking about like fucking bowling green, ball state, get out of here. Um who's who oh yeah, that's right. Who's even ball state quarterback? Connor Basilak. Oh, no, Basilak's for sorry. Bowling Green, right? Oh, Ball yeah, State. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Actually, that's fair to, fair enough to Bowling Green. They got it. They have a like a steady dude in the room. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, yeah. Like he threw some picks, but those are like FEC picks. So I think they'll go down in the mat. Do we want to discuss? Sorry, I I. I... Uh, mentioned someone playing on the wrong team. You want to talk about Ball State? Yeah, no, no. I just, yeah, I mean, because, like, I felt like, I feel like you keep up with Ball State. Like, I feel like you keep up with the uh, with the Redbirds, with the Cardinals. Um, so, like, yeah, what's going on with this team? Who is, who is this Hatcher? They say he, he's Texas State. He um, was recruited by Alabama. Okay. Couldn't 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 start. Then he played at 
Arkansas State was okay. Uh, remember, he split reps with um, Logan Bonner, who hmm. uh, the coach took with him to Utah State. And then he went to Texas State. And now he's at Ball State. Uh, so he's got a lot of experience, but he's not great. Um, but, yeah, um, let's see. What are his well, stats? Well, well, I'm going to say this for him. I'm going to say this for him. If you get recruited by Bama, that's a good sign. You got at least a yes. little bit of a knack there. Yeah. Um, um he he's he's okay. Um twenty twenty two, sixty two percent completion. That's great. Um two thousand six hundred yards, nineteen TDs, ten INTs. Not not bad. Fifty eight uh twenty twenty one, fifty eight almost 59% completion, 2,400 yards, 19 TDs, 13 interceptions, 2020, 60% completion, 19 touchdowns, two interceptions, 2019, 66% completion, 27 touchdowns, and and 10 interceptions. Um, They need that season. Yeah, they need that season. Yeah. So he's... got that season. Yeah. He's... Fine, you know. Um, yeah, he's fine. He's certainly. I think he's cromulent. Okay. He's. I he's mean, their cromulent. offense. Their offense will need his help. They don't got a great offensive line situation here. Yeah. Um. And also, they lost. Um. Where is the – they lost um, Carson Steele, uh, a 1,500-yard rusher from last year. 1,500 yards, 14 touchdowns. He transferred to UCLA. Um, so that is a no good. Um, also, um, I think Johannes Tyler, who's been on the team for years, has um, graduated. Uh, so I'm not – Sure, they really have the offensive talent, even with a cromulent QB. I bet this is going to be a team that's very, very difficult to bet on a week-to-week basis. Like, probably better than Bowling Green, Kent State, Western, maybe comparable to Buffalo. Miami of Ohio, Central Michigan, like there's going to be a lot of close games that they're involved in. I would kind of, I would just kind of stay away from this team for the most part. Well, they start the season at Kentucky and at, at Georgia, so they're going to get whooped up on. Yeah, they're going to get fucked up. So we'll see how that goes for them. Um, yeah, Bowling Green. So they bring in Bethlehem from Mizzou. Is that right? That's not bad. He was he was at Mizzou and then he was at Indiana for a year. He went to Indiana last year. Uh, yeah. No. I don't like sound <laughs> of that. Like, like you know, Mizzou. That's the SEC. That's tough. Who else they Who else they got? They got only five guys coming back on defense. So all right. So the offense. Yeah. They don't. Yeah, they they don't have. They don't have much. They don't have much. And um, the real problem for them is they had a stud defensive end, um, and Carl Brooks, who got drafted. Like he was their defense. Um, let me pull this up real quick. Um, my internet actually wants to move quickly. Yeah, he he's going to be a major um his his absence is going to be a major challenge for the team. So he had um he had 10 sacks last year. 
Uh, and because all the other um, opposing offensive linemen, they like double teamed him quite significantly. Like a lot of the other linebackers were able to, to, to feast um, in that situation. So now that he's gone, um, I think this defense is not going to be nearly as stout. Uh, if we look at their defense from last year, if I can actually pull anything up here for a second. Um, so within conference play, um, held Akron to 28 points, uh, Miami 13 points, Central Michigan 18 points, Western Michigan 9 points, um, in a couple contests, you know, they, they, they performed poorly in others, but they, at their, their defense did have a very high ceiling last year. And with that player gone, I'm just really not sure. Um, I'm just really not sure what, what this team can, can truly be like, yeah, okay. Matt Leffler on the hot seat. That's why I wish we could bet him first coach fire. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to, this is going to be rough for them. Um, they don't, didn't really have a lot of, um, excellent, uh, skill players. Um, I think their, their top running backs return. Um, if I remember correctly, their top two wideouts return, but these guys weren't anything really special. Oh no, their 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 number one ride at wideout actually went to Arkansas. Excuse me, no bueno. Oh, and their third and their tight end went to um the the Los Angeles Rams. No good, no good. Tough schedule at Liberty. Tough start. schedule. Home to Eastern Illinois, then at Michigan. They get Ohio for homecoming. Ohio is going to piss all over their homecoming. One and three to start the season. Then they go down to Atlanta to visit Georgia Tech. Then they come back up to play Miami O. Then they go on the road to Buffalo. Oh, this, this the wheels really can come off the wagon. This team can just start out one and six. And, and Akron ain't going to be a gimme. In the past... Mm. In the past 37 years, how many uh, Bowling Green players do you think have been drafted? So since since we were born. Big pardon? I don't know, a handful. Uh, six. Ten, I don't know. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, yeah. That's, that's some, yeah, that seems reasonable. All right. I mean, well, that's not Scott Leffler's fault. I mean, he's look, he's just thirteen and twenty nine, and he's going to be like fourteen and thirty five. It's just not a good setup for him. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean he's bad. But he's just, you know, the loser. We'll see. If they go bowling, he should be the conference coach of the year. Um. When do so they went bowling last year? Um, let's see. The only bowling. time left was been bowling, mind you. Lost to the Aggies. Let's see. Okay, if we had to take a guess, when do you think the last time they went bowl they um, they went bowling was? Um. When what's his probably when what's his face was there, fucking fucking Clawson. So when was that? They um they lost like 2014 or some shit. They lost the, the uh, 2015 Go Daddy Bowl to Georgia Southern. Okay, so like the year after Clawson. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, ever since yeah ever since the Clawson regime. Yeah, the teams are fucked. Yeah. Yeah, Le- no, Leftless' predecessor wasn't any better. I don't even know his predecessor's fucking name. Nobody knows. Uh, Mike Jenks. Excuse me? Mike what did, Jenks. What did you just fucking say? Mike Jenks? Mike, Mike Jenks. 
<laughs> he is the that running. Sounds... He's, curr- he's currently he the up. running back coach for Houston, for the Houston Cougars. Oh, Dana. You can't hire people with these made up names. Anyway, yeah, Bowling Green, yeah, they're yeah, they're borderline unbackable. This team is circling the drain. Uh and and, th- and those roadies is, is starting the conference season with Ohio, with Ohio and two roadies, not ideal. Not ideal. I, I think with Connor or Bazelak under center, this might be a bet on team as a Double digit dog, um, but yeah, I'm not. I, 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 they're gonna not. They're, 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 they're not bowling. No way. Yeah, no way. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Later in the season, this, yeah, because if if they just don't turn over the ball a lot, you could usually stay in a game in conference. You know, usually. Like. So you know, just we fun. have. Yeah. We have NIU and Western left. Where are you uh, on? Not to mention good old the Kent State. But, oh, um, yeah, but I, I guess, forgot Kent. Uh, of, uh, of these teams, yeah, I guess we got to talk about Rocky Lombardi, who has been a college quarterback longer than we've been potting. He played – he took his first snap for Sparty back in 2017. Wild. Uh, yeah. Absolutely still, wild. Still crazy after all these years. Um, I don't know how to feel. I don't know how to feel about Northern Illinois. I don't want to bet on them. I do think they're more backable than Bowling Green, though. Yep. Like, you know? Like, but I don't want to bet on them. Oh, uh, let's see. What is their win total? Their win total is five and a half juiced a tick to the over. So they will struggle to go bowling. Makes sense to me. I buy Yeah. That. I think this um, is a team that's going to be uh, that's that's going to be fun to back on a week to week basis. Um, like they're going to be so they they won the conference in 2021 and last year they really struggled. I think this is like something in between. Like they got too lucky in 2021 and they got unlucky in 2022. I think I think we they they go to a bowl game at least. I don't know if they if they crest the six and a half. But I think they crashed six. Okay. Let's have a look at their schedule real quick. They open at Boston College. Tough. That's winnable. But doable. That's a winnable game. I mean that's a winnable it, game. Yeah, it's doable. It's also loose <laughs> doable. All right. Home this home to the Salukis of Southern Illinois. Gotta take Losable. Care Lo- nope. <laughs> Losable game. <laughs> what are you talking about? How are they gonna lose you, to Southern Illinois? You always do this shit. You always do this shit. It's <laughs> as if you haven't been watching college football longer than I have. Their teams lose to the F- FCS all the time in college football. The Salukis beat Northwestern last year after they fucking beat Nebraska in Dublin. What are you talking about? Like this happens all the time. FCS teams mm. beat FBS teams. This happens. You always discount this. I always. do always discount this. That's true. <laughs> I do always. I will be. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Every year, I, it's the same shit. And every year, I'm like, like a Pikachu face. Like, oh, I can't believe this happened. Oh, hamburgers. <laughs> like, like it always fucking does. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Could lose it. At Nebraska. Hopefully, you know, they're building something new there. Home to Tulsa. Yeah, got to beat Tulsa at home. Got to beat Tulsa at home to make this total. At Toledo for the conference opener, then at Akron. Home to Ohio for homecoming. A lot of teams scheduling Ohio for homecoming. A lot of teams trying to ruin their homecoming. Home to Eastern Michigan. That should have been homecoming. At Central Mish, home to Ball State. Home the Western Mish at Kent State. It's going to be a struggle to go bowling. It's going to be a struggle. They're going to be, yeah, like in it, just tooth and claw here. In in college football, there is the distribution of outcomes is 
is, is quite vast for any given game or, or even during a season. Like Georgia Southern can go into Nebraska and beat Nebraska outright, and they also can be smoked by Louisiana 36-17, to a Louisiana team that didn't make a bowl. Like, those things can happen. So, like, Northern Illinois can go and beat Boston College and also lose to the Salukis in the same season. This kind of shit happens all the fucking time. That's a good point. It really does. And, yeah, this is the year that I get a grip and start being (laughs) responsible. Northern Illinois could beat – Northern Illinois could beat Nebraska. If that same team, you know, if that same team and that same atmosphere can withstand a loss or can witness a loss by Georgia Southern, they can they could see Northern Illinois, um, uh, you know, beating Big Red too. I mean, That's all possible. Day. It's a new day with Matt Rule, but you know, okay, it's a new day. Not going to lose at home to Northern Illinois. Ridiculous. <laughs> anyway. Oh, all right. Who else we got here? We got, uh... Oh, we got, yeah, Western, Western and Michigan, Kent. of course. Yeah, Western Michigan and Kent. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's a long way. Western Michigan, it's been a long time since P.J. Fleck was a coach. I got a new coach. Lance Taylor, who served previously uh, on David Shaw's staff, okay, and, um, was the OC for Scott Satterfield, Louisville Cardinal. This team is not bringing anyone. No, it's bringing two back on defense. Not great. Bringing back most of their offense, I suppose. I suppose that's fair. So they can only. They can only get better than four and a half yards per play from last year. Nah, uh, nah, they might be worse. <laughs> they're, they're, <there's> two, <laughs> their two best offensive players are now Golden Gophers. Oof. That's rough. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they bring in Hayden Wolf from Old Dominion. Is that right? Yep. Not great. Not great. I don't remember Not great. thinking to myself that Old Dominion was moving the shit out of the football. <laughs> I don't remember ever thinking no. that. Uh, okay. All right. You know what, Kalamazoo? <laughs> y'all are y'all are a couple years away. Um, y'all, they, yeah. they should just remember the PJ Fleck years. They had good years. Those, those were the good years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, on yeah. on defense too, linebacker goes to Minnesota. Defensive mm-hmm. lineman goes to Florida State. Defensive lineman goes to Indiana. Um, so on a team that was really struggling last year, they they lose significant talent uh, on on the defensive and offensive side of the ball. I think this is going to be a total fucking mess. Yeah, it's gonna no, it's gonna be a wash in Kalamazoo is how it's gonna be. Yes. Yeah. And that's, 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 and that's thank goodness wash. and thank goodness for, for I mean the the Ferentz family better be counting their lucky stars because these some bitches are heading to Iowa City and this is this is really gonna help with um averaging above twenty five points per game, let me tell you what. Oh no! Oh my God! This that is my favorite <laughs> handicapping factor that we've done. Like in all the preview pods, that's my favorite. That in order to maintain the nepotism, the Hawkeyes will have to be uncharacteristically big bullies this year. I love that capping factor. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're fucked. You know what's weird? is that the dude that got hired at Kent State was in the P.J. Flood coaching tree. Oh, like, really? Yeah, like he's, he's he was literally the assistant head coach like this whole time in Minnesota. And like, 
I don't understand why that guy didn't get hired at Western Michigan. Like, Western Michigan is crazy. Satterfield's OC? Ridiculous. Uh, but, yeah, Kenny Burns popping in at the helm. No one with the entire offense left. Incredible. Does that happen every year now? <laughs> is there always going to be a team that has the entire team fucking leave? Woof. Oh, this is a, it's a rebuilding year for the Golden Flash. Definitely rebuilding year. Yeah. Um, UCF. Minus 35 and a half. Lay it. No, I mean, Gus is a piece of shit. <laughs> he yeah. definitely would cheerfully a beat a team 70 to nothing. Like, he would love to do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> but here. Kent State's going to be pretty helpless in week one. Not a single offensive player returning. 35 and a half. Lays a 35 and a half. They are, yeah. I mean, it's it's a bunch of randos being brought together learning a whole new system. This is going to be crazy. (laughs) Yeah, no, we're going to lay it. Yes. This is also, they're going down to Orlando. Fucking Florida Heat. Like, kids from Ohio and the Midwest going down nighttime heat, never played, never played together. This team's doomed. Doomed, I tell you. Doomed. It is. It but, is going to be absolute pandemonium. But, sir, this will be a team later in the year that we're going we're gonna to have to remember at some point. Backing them. This happened with yeah, Hawaii. Gonna... This this happened with Hawaii. This happened with FIU. Um, this happened with Georgia Tech. Teams really struggling out of the jump. Come week five, the market over over adjusts to how bad they are. Um, come come probably Miami that Miami of Ohio game or or even at Eastern Michigan. This might be a team we want to think about back at. Back in come October, I could get with it. I definitely believe in the PJ Fleck coaching tree. Hundred percent believe in that. All right, so we did a pretty good max pod. We gave out a couple of long shots here. I mean, you know, I'm leaning to Ohio plus two seventy. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, you know, you can decide to bet on the Bobcats week to week too. I mean, they're gonna. They're going to be favored a lot. So there's that. Go Akron. Go Zips. Zip them up. Yeah, no, yeah. We're giving out Zips plus 3,000 and also the Chips 30 to 1. So those are those are some hot long shots. I, I, I'm definitely going to feel pretty smug holding those, holding those two. 